Welcome to the Jeremy Ryan Houchins podcast. I am Jeremy Ryan Houchins. Thanks for joining us today. I want to talk to you today about journaling. I uh, recently gave uh, purchase all of my employees' journals. We had just done a um, we do a Friday morning study, and uh, it was put on my heart to do so. So I got some, purchased them for them, and handed them out. And we started talking about journaling. I probably have 10 to 12 journals that I've filled up or mostly filled up. And what do I put in journals? What's the purpose of a journal? It's like I explained to the guys. I said, you know, I'm not sitting down there every single day, putting the date down and writing down what's going on in my life for that day. That's not to say that that's not what you can do. That's just not what I do. That's not what I look at a journal as. So I'll give you a couple ideas of what my journal looks like. As you might know, I write songs and things like that. I have ideas. So on my journals, I put the date, always put the date. And this is something as of recently in the last five or six years, because when I was early on, I didn't always put the date and it frustrated me because I would read, I'd go back and read it. And I'd be like, gosh, when did I write that? And there's no reference point. I don't know. I can kind of vaguely see between maybe two other dates that I did, but who knows what that time frame was like. I mean, that could be six months. And I don't write in my journal every single day. Now, I go through periods where I'm writing in my journal every day, and sometimes I'm writing in my journal more than once in a day. And I put the date every single time I put a new entry in there. And so something like that, what I do, uh, how I go about doing it is I'll hear a phrase that I like, and I'll just write it down. And I mean, it can seem awesome at the time, but then it becomes stupid later on. I'll give you, for instance, I just wrote down a quote by Hippocrates that says, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. I saw it on the entry to the television show Alone that I just watched the last season of on Netflix. And I was like, man, that's a cool quote. And I started thinking about it. So I wrote it down, put it in my journal. Now, it meant something to me at the time. I liked what the sentiment, I liked the idea of it. And I might come back in, you know, six months to a year or flipping through it, look at that and be like, that is stupid. But I put those things down because at the time they mean something to me. They say something to me. It triggers a thought, triggers a feeling, triggers an emotion, triggers something. It just trigger. I call it triggers. And so I think we all experience triggers in a day. And what I have tended to Tend, what I tend to notice, goodness, getting hard to talk. When I, what I tend to notice is, my producer's sitting here laughing at me. What I tend to notice is that the more I put entries into my journal, the more sensitive I am to the things that are going on around me. And I don't know if it's subconscious that I'm like looking for things to put in my journal or what the deal is, but as I write in my journal, whether that's a small entry or a little, and I, like I said, I might write a saying, date it. I might write a paragraph, date it. I might put a song down with the author or like a lyric from a song and date it. And I've wrote letters to God and I've dated it. I've wrote letters to my children and I've dated it. I've put things and I have done regular journal entries where like this is what I'm going through right now. Or maybe I'm going through a time of fasting and prayer. And I really encourage you if you are going through a particular time of fasting and prayer that you do document that in some form or another. Uh, because that's amazing growth that typically happens uh, when those uh, when you're in those seasons, and so I write these things down, and I would encourage you to journal. And I I know it, journaling is kind of has this weird vibe to it that you know you you always hear people say you know journal journal journal, but I would encourage you to actually do it and do it maybe in the way that I'm saying, not necessarily just put an entry down every day and feel like you have to fill up a page. I think that's really where things have been misplaced. I think journaling is important because I think you need to get your thoughts on paper. I think looking at your thoughts on paper does something to you internally too. I know when I'm writing, I'll start off with something like just a phrase that is repeated in my head. And oftentimes those phrases are turned into songs. And I have songs that have taken me six years to write. And I have songs I've written in like 10 minutes. I just did a song called You Are Good. And um, you can check that out on, I think we're putting it on the podcast and on YouTube and whatnot. Uh, we actually videoed that, um, just me and my guitar. And 
it's a simple song. It's nothing fancy. Just talking about God's goodness. I was just thinking about God's goodness one day, and I was writing it down about how good he is, despite all the craziness that's going on in this life, despite COVID, despite, you know, the insanity of the left or the right or who cares. In the midst of it all, God is good always and forever, no matter what's going on. He is good. And so I just wrote that down, and that turned into a song. And I've written things down and gone back and look at that phrase, look at a phrase and be like, oh, wow, I forgot I wrote that and looked at it again. And then I turned that into a song, and it wasn't necessarily at that moment. And so what do I use for journals? I, I oftentimes have more than one journal, Real, really. I, I keep one. I typically keep one in my guitar case. I keep one at home. Sometimes I keep one in my office. Sometimes I keep one in my car. So I don't necessarily just have one journal either. I'm like ADHD to the 10th power. So I'll just write something. And the, the idea is to get the thoughts on paper. It's not necessarily to be like organized or anything like that. I mean, that would be great. I'm just not that dude. So I'll write wherever I can. And sometimes, I mean, I have 500 and something notes in my phone. And then I'll wait uh, two, three, four weeks. And I'll go through those notes and I'll get rid of things that are stupid and things that don't mean nothing. Um, and I also use it for work, but things that I forgot about, because I mean, I'll forget about stuff I wrote in like two days. It'll be gone out of my memory. And so I'll go back to it, you know, that and when I'm going through my phone two or three weeks later, I'll be like, man, I forgot all about that. I really like that. And then I'll put it, I'll write it in paper form in the journal so that I know it's there forever because I don't care what people say. If it's electronic, it's not necessarily forever because things get lost. If you've ever had something lost that you put time and effort into is devastating. It's happened to me. Anyways, uh, I write wherever I possibly can. I keep more than one journal. I write things down. I make sure I date it. And if there's a thought, sometimes we'll put what it means to me. If I have a business idea or I have something in regards to my business or whatever the case might be, it's not always spiritual, but it's always real. It's always authentic. And, uh, I mean, my heart's pretty open book. I, I don't really care if uh, my wife has gone through my journals. I've had my daughter. She's more inclined. My sons could give a, no care about what I write whatsoever. Um, they're on their own little thing. But my daughter and wife, they, they sometimes, because they're a little bit more sensitive, and they're like, hey, I want to see what dad's doing. I want to see what my husband's doing. So they'll look at that, and they'll be like, what does this mean? And I'll go into it. And sometimes it's like, do you really think that? And I'll be like, I don't know if I think that or not. But, I mean, I'm a pretty open book, but I like the journal idea. I like the, the mindset behind it. I like getting your thoughts on paper, and I encourage you to get your thoughts on paper. It's really important. If you're a writer, you're probably already doing something like that anyway. If you write poems or if you write music, you're writing this stuff down. I hope you're not just doing it digitally because I think there's something therapeutic about using your hands to write it on paper. But um, keep it. I mean, put those things and bind them up. I mean, there's, those are probably the, some of the things I would grab in a fire. All my journals are on one bookshelf in one spot, and I would just probably throw them in a bag and be gone. I mean, I, I have a lot of valuable stuff, but my thoughts are important, and I want to share those thoughts with my children and my grandchildren, uh, future grandchildren, that, uh, hey, I'm a flawed human. I've worked out things. I've struggled with things, and God's got me through them, and you can kind of see my struggles through my writings. And I think we see that with David. I think that's one of the things I love about the scriptures. We can see the authenticity of individuals and those that we tend as people to relate to the most are the ones who are the most authentic, the ones who give us the greatest insight into who they are, their struggles, like men like David, Elijah, Paul. So anyways, journal, grab something. I think you get them for like, you can get them at the, the dollar store, Dollar Tree. Uh, you can get them for a buck. And start there, you know, and just start, just start writing anything, one line, one word, date it next day, you know, and try to do it every day. If you can, I don't do it every day. I'll be honest. Uh, sometimes I'll go for a week or two without. And then sometimes I'll go for like a season for like two months where I'm putting like five entries in a day. And so we go through seasons in life and that's okay. We don't have to be like on the nose that I got to do this every single day. Just but be real and be authentic with it. If you do put something in there, let it be real. Let it be genuine. Let it be authentic. And hopefully you grow because of it. So, and if you're uh, an aspiring uh, songwriter, it's a necessity. It is an absolute necessity. Uh, I've recorded probably 50 songs. And 
out of those 50 songs, I probably realistically like maybe 20 to 30 of them, but I've probably written 400 songs. And so in my journals, in the 12 I have, I probably have four to 500 songs that I've written. And the ones that have made it to uh, recording have been about 50. And out of those 50, I probably like 25 or 30. And out of 25 or 30, I might, you know, I would consider maybe six are good. And so, but it's, it's for me, it's volume and for other people. I mean, they have gifts and talents where man, everything they write is like really good and they just do some great, great stuff. But I noticed that all the, the awesome musicians out there and like um, the ones who've been around for a long time, they have like 10, 12 really good songs. And the more albums they have, you're going to get one or two great songs on an album. And the rest I call skip songs. And I... <laughs> I, my wife makes fun of me because she, there's a couple songs she doesn't even like that I, I've written. I mean, and uh, where it's a skip song, you know, it's, it's all right. It's not horrendous. It's not going to kill you if you listen to it, but it's just like one of those ones. All right, skip. I'm not a fan of that. And that's just real. That's just being real. And so I write a lot because I'm hoping to get more of those gems. I'm hoping to build that repertoire more than those five or six songs that I think are good uh, to maybe 15 or 20, you know. Maybe I could have an Essentials playlist someday of more than just three to five songs because I don't know if I have more than that that would be considered essential or if any, depending on your taste in music. So out of 400 songs I've written, uh, 50 have been recorded and five might be good. And so I just keep writing. I keep writing. And so it's not about quote unquote quality. It's about quantity and out of quantity comes quality. That is what I've discovered. I'll say that again. It's not about quality, it's about quantity, and out of quantity comes quality. The more you do it, uh, the more practice you're going to be at it, and better stuff is going to come out of you. It's just like opening up a well, just, just more and more that comes out, it gets better and better. So start on that journey, especially if you're a songwriter or somebody who likes poetry or things like that, just keep writing every single day, over and over and over and over and over again. And don't think everything that you do is great because it's not. All right. Well, I hope this podcast finds you well. I hope you like, subscribe, share with everyone that you know. Share the love of Jesus more than this podcast. And um, keep your heads up out there. It's a dark world. Shine your light and be an influence and don't die in mediocrity. I'll talk to you later.